Hello Digital Graphics! This week we're going to be focusing on doing uh, layer adjustments. Now layer adjustments are um, essentially layer filters that you can throw onto your work and they do different things like change the color of stuff, you can make things black and white, um, but essentially you're making adjustments to the physical appearance of your layers. So I'm going to review grouping your layers. We will uh, focus on the adjustment layer um, that is hue saturation, which really is a color adjustment. Hue saturation is just such a fancy term that it'll be easier for me to yell out color. So that's what I mean when I say color adjustments. I truly mean hue saturation. Um, and then I'm also going to review masking and also mask duplication. Um, Again, masking and mask duplication will help you so much, as you guys found out in our last module as well, and it'll keep going that way. So to start off, let's go to our layer manager, and my layers are essentially the same as yours. I've added these little instructions here, but we've got these different colored shirts, and what we're going to do today is... We are going to fix these shirts because some of these shirts are colored for the wrong team. So if you've grown up in Utah, and I would say that maybe only half of you have in the introduction, so many of you guys were from out of state. So welcome and welcome to the rivalry. But there is a school down on the southern end of the valley near Provo that I don't particularly love and their school colors are blue. Um, and... I would like to fix it so that it matches my alma mater, which is the University of Utah, which is the color red. So whether it's a blue shirt, a white shirt, or an orange shirt, as you see here, we're going to fix this so that you're not cheering for the wrong team, but you're cheering for the right team, which happens to be the red team. And I hope you guys know I am kidding. I really don't care if you love or like BYU or if you don't like the University of Utah. Let's have a little fun with it. Um, so to start off, I'm going to go ahead and start grouping my layers. So I'm going to make group number one my blue shirt. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is that now that we're adding all of these masks and layer filters, things like that, it will just help to have everything nice and neat. Um, let me make a group for the white shirt. And if you can see, it's really hard for me to type and work at the same time. So at any point, again, pause and come back here, catch up with me. And you can check to see if it worked by kind of minimizing them. So now I've got a blue shirt folder and a blue shirt. I'm going to turn off the other two, so I'm just working on one at a time. And we'll start with this one right here. So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and create my hue saturation adjustment layer. And you'll find these down here. And we've talked about these before when we did brightness and contrast as well as our levels. But again, today we're going to get into hue saturation. So I'm going to click on that and our properties menu pops up like it always does. And I'm going to show you what it does by default. Now remember our goal is to make this shirt red. So here, the first adjustment is the hue, and you can see if I, I can come here and go side to side, or I can grab this. Can you notice that like when I go over to like the red, it actually makes this orange? And when I go over to the red here, I'm still kind of in the orangish yellow, and when I'm in the green, it's not really green. Here's what's happening. What it's doing is it's taking the original color, which is blue, and it's essentially showing you what happens when you add, you know, this color to it. That's that's what's happening here. But I don't know enough about color theory, so we're going to do it the easy way and I would say the correct way. We're going to click on this button here, which is Colorize. And what that does now is you can see that now the shirt is changing to whatever color I've selected up here. So let me start off with green, right? So here's a green shirt. Well, we want a green shirt, but what happened to this guy? Let's pretend he's our boyfriend. What happened to our boyfriend here? He's like turned into Frankenstein, right? He is also green. So think about what we've been talking about and what we've been working on. How can we stop him, our model, our mannequin, I'll, I'll remove boyfriend from the conversation, 
taking a look at my layers, what can we do so that he doesn't look sickly, but we just change the color of his shirt? I hope you guys are all thinking or yelling masking at your screens right now. Hopefully you said masking. Um, and you would be right if that's what you said. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a mask on our hue saturation layer to only grab his shirt. And to do that, we're going to, I'm going to turn this off for now. So I just turn this off for just a moment. And I'm going to go back to our selection methods because one of the ones that we did not love will actually be really helpful this week. So if I go to my wands, which is W, I want to go to my magic wand tool. And I can specifically remember nobody was impressed with the magic wand tool. There wasn't a lot of magic going on with it. But this week, as promised, I did say it would be relevant sooner than later. Let me actually turn off my notes here too. What we're going to do is instead of just clicking here, okay, I'm going to hit Control D to deselect. We're going to right click and do you see where it says color range? If we click on color range, let me slide this over, okay, what I can do is right now it's looking for sampled colors, which means if I take this little eyedropper and click on his shirt, do you see how it mostly gets the blues? Like you can see some of his armpits are missing. There's some areas down here, but you can click different areas and get different colors of blue. And you know it's selected when this turns white. Another adjustment you can make is there's this thing called fuzziness. So if you turn that up, do you see how it's grabbing more and more blue? That means, you know, it's getting a little fuzzy. Um, it's not exactly the blue you selected, or if you turn it down, it selects less of the blue. That's something to play with. Depending on your original color, you might want your fuzziness to be really strong or not quite as strong. I'm going to keep this fuzziness, let's say around 65. I think that looks good. And I know that his underarms aren't selected, but that will still preserve the shadow. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And let me turn this green back on. So do you see that we've still got some nice shadows so that it looks kind of believable that it's a shirt? Now let me undo that. And I'm going to show you what happens if I turn my fuzziness all the way up. Um, and again, some colors work better than others, some don't. So this is up all the way. Let's turn this back on. And to be honest, this actually doesn't look too bad. I've still got some good shadows. One thing to watch out for is you don't want his shirt to look completely flat without shadows. Then we're kind of in that danger zone of looking photoshopped and fake. That's kind of what we're trying to avoid. But um, I hope you agree that this looks good. You know, we have a green shirt, now let's get it to red. So with that, I'm gonna hop back up to properties. And let's take our hue. We've got reds here and we've got reds down here. Now, I'm sure you guys will agree that is not very red, which brings me to our next two adjustments. Saturation is essentially how much of that color you want to see. So a very low saturated red, that's not any red. Think of adding or turning up the red. So here is me adding more red. Can you see that as we saturate it with the color red, it is truly getting more and more red. So it's up to you to decide if you wanna be up here on the spectrum or a little bit lower. And then the lightness takes that saturated color and it'll e either make it darker or lighter. So we can get even into the coral pinks, you know, but remember we want red here and I want like a really nice crimson red. Something, something about here, okay? But you know, for you U fans or for you non U fans, keep playing and see what works best um, for you. But I think this looks pretty good as a red shirt and then I'm gonna quickly show you the other two as well. So if I hop back to my layers, so I'm clicking all over the place, let me minimize this and turn it off. And I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna do my orange shirt next. So we know that when we add a hue saturation mixer, when we start playing with it, it applies to the whole layer. So now our model looks like he's sunburned. See how not only his shirt changed, but his skin tone changed too. How can we fix that? 
Again, I hope you guys are yelling mask at your screens, so yell mask. But remember, we have already masked a shirt here. So if you want, we can do our magic, hold the Alt key down and duplicate this right here. And you can see that it applies nicely. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. And just like the blue shirt, we want to make the orange shirt look red. Just, you know, to make me feel better. And so here it's on my mask, but if I click there, then we can look at the properties of the hue saturation. So this time I'm going to pull it down. Oh, and I forgot to hit colorize. Got a little excited. So now this looks like it would be in the reds, but I got to bump up that saturation quite a bit. That's still looking orange, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, if I go to the lightness and kind of play with those two, that looks pretty good. Okay. So here is kind of the magic behind the catalogs. So if you do online shopping um, and you're looking through some items and you see that there's one shirt shown in 12 different colors, know that model just doesn't hold really still and is able to hold the exact same pose with all the same wrinkles or if it's like sheets or towels, there's not a magic person who can um, make a bed or fold towels so well to replicate every crease and nook and cranny. It is the magic of Photoshop. That's what we're doing here. Even lipsticks. This is how they do it. So one thing to watch out for, I'm not going to clean all this up here, but zoom in because can you see on his collar, I need to clean up this mask a little bit. I don't want to see any orange peeking through, right? Like we are working for executives here. So we want to make sure that all of this stuff is included. So go ahead and play with your mask a little bit and clean all of these edges up. You know, we already did a, a really easy shortcut to kind of add stuff in um, by duplicating the mask, but if you need to clean it up, please do. So for example, if I take my brush, um, we want to mask this more. So if we want to mask it more, I want a black color here. And I'm on my mask, so if I come through, oh, I wanted the opposite, I want white. Let me reset my colors. <laughs> Again, sometimes when I'm in front of an audience, I also panic. See how that kind of helps get those edges there? That's what I'll be looking for. So again, this is tedious, I know, but it pays off in the long run. Okay, so let's get rid of any hints of other colors. So let me zoom out. So you can see that that orange is starting to disappear here, but I've still got it over here on the other sleeve. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and do the white shirt now. Now the white shirt is going to be tricky when we have our uh, magic wand. Why? Because our background is already white. So if we come onto our white t-shirt, it's going to grab everything. And so this is where, again, we love being able to hold uh, Alt and just duplicating that mask onto our adjustment layer. Again, I'm getting too excited. Let me add our adjustment layer of our hue saturation. Go back to my layers. Oh, I actually, because I had stuff selected, see how it thinks it already knows what to mask? Thank you, but no thank you. So we're going to delete that. I'm going to hit Alt and drag right on top. So now if I go to color, oh, sorry guys, my brain is not working, it's summertime. I really just don't know what I'm doing right now to be completely honest, I'm so sorry. Properties, woohoo, I have a winner. Okay, colorize, so we have to turn saturation all the way up, we have to turn lightness all the way over here, whoops, too far, and then we'll eventually get red. So because we're at white, we have to go to the extreme because, you know, when you're trying to color white, you have to throw in lots of color. If you throw in too much, though, you can see that the lightness ends up going from red to black. So know your limits. And again, do you see that I still have those same areas to clean up here where the white is poking through? So please take your time with those and make sure you get those cleaned up. And that will take care of the exercise portion. Um, giving you a preview of what your assignment will be. What you'll do is you will open this exact same file again, this exercise file, and you'll save it as your assignment. Now for your assignment, instead of giving me thread, th sorry, 
three red tree shirts. Um, thread, three red, you see where I went with that. And instead of three red t-shirts, you're going to give me three unique colored shirts. By unique, I mean one of them is green, one of them is yellow, one of them is orange. Whatever colors you want, but they need to be unique from each other and unique from whatever uh, color was below. So after you color them, I also want you to add some sort of a logo or a graphic so that it actually looks like a t-shirt that you would wear. Remember, make sure that it's professional and mostly appropriate. Um, so you'll be doing some masking to get the logo in there. You'll be doing some transforming to make sure that the logo fits right. And once you get the logo on there, you might even play with like the opacity to make sure that it, you know, sits on there nicely. Whatever you want to do to make it look nice. But um, again, after you finish the exercise, you'll go through and make your own t-shirts and adjustments as well. Um, so that is it for our exercise. I hope that helped. Um, before I sign off, I'm going to show you guys one more time. I'm going to make a copy of this blue shirt layer. I'm going to show you one more time how to use the magic wand tool. Because I used the... Um, the duplicate so much on the mask, I don't think we got to use magic wand as much as I wanted to. So again, if you just click, it gets most of the blue, but I'm gonna deselect and go to right click and go to color range. And then this time, if I click in here, it sees that you're getting blues and you can turn it down a little bit, the fuzziness, and bring some of the shadows back in. Again, the shadows give it dimension, it makes it look a little bit more real. So you can use that as well. Um, okay, that's it. I hope it covers it. Remember, well, it's too late. It's over now. I was going to say pause and rewind as you feel necessary. But have fun with it and apply it to your other projects as well. Thanks, everyone.